Welcome to our April video update. Um, when we first started these videos, they were basically new news that was coming out. We wanted to get it to our membership. It has worked very well. Our membership has, has looked forward to a lot of these videos, and we haven't had one for some time now. So Mike and myself will go over information today that has been going on <clears throat> for some time now. Um, there's not a lot of real big breaking news. It's just updates of what we've been doing in meetings and uh, give you an idea of what's going on in the plant while everyone's been off since around February 7th. First thing I like to hit on is benefits. Um, the benefits guys have asked me to kind of convey some information that they're getting phone calls about, and one of them is dental coverage. Everyone should know, uh, either by the documentation that was sent out by the benefits department or past history, your dental will go and continue from the month following the month of layoff. So if we take the example of February 7th, uh, that will give you uh, dental coverage till March 31st. So most people who are laid off at that period of time will now not no longer have dental coverage. Unfortunately, some of our members are calling myself and the benefits department on cover, uh, costs that they've occurred because the dental coverage has lapsed. What I would suggest you do that uh, check with your spouse or uh, if you're, you or your children have any dental appointments coming up. If it's not an emergency or it can be put off, I would ask that you uh, tell your dentist and that way you'll avoid any undue costs for you and your family going forward. The second issue I'd like to talk about is one that we've had several meetings about and has been ongoing for some time, and that is the sub-entitlement issue. And this regards to mostly the 2013 going forward uh, employees. When it was negotiated 11, 12 years ago, and that was the 10-year program, the 10-year program was kind of put in place, and then there was other issues that were folded into the 10-year program. One of them was the sub. It was structured for 26 weeks, and it was more so for uh, a permanent layoff. And you would collect 13 weeks at 65, then you would collect 13 weeks at 50. As a lot of our members are finding right now, the 50% we have members collecting $1.97 per week while they're collecting 50%. And I believe it's, it's, it should be embarrassing for General Motors, it should be embarrassing for CW Unifor, it was CW at the time when it was negotiated, that our members are collecting $1.97. Now that has to do with their wage. Uh, with the September increase, it will drastically help with the sub-entitlements amount of money you'll be taking home. But till then, we've had several meetings on how to replenish the sub back to 65%. Legacy workers will be entitled to either 52 or 104 weeks of sub. And it re replenishes every year. So if it's a rotating layoff, a legacy worker will always continue to have some form, uh, always have uh, weeks of entitlement in their bank. With the newer employees, um, if we have 26 weeks of layoff, you run out of sub and it doesn't really clearly say when it's reestablished. And that's what we're meeting about over the last few weeks, is figuring out a program that when someone is on reoccurring layoffs, when they kick back into the 65%. We will believe we're very close right now. Me and Mike have met with the company on this issue. Um, we don't have a final decision yet, but we're very close. But part of the problem is when we get a decision finally made, it's going to be how do you replenish those sub-credits when you're continuously to be off. And this would be an example of this would be we have people who are now hitting the five-year seniority uh, mark in their seniority at uh, CAMI. I had one call yesterday, and it was in regards, well, I've hit five years now. Shouldn't I be entitled to sub? Actually, no. He, that person will be entitled to sub at the five-year mark once they come in and work a week. So with the sub program that we're coming up with, again, those people are gonna have to come back in the plant to replenish their sub credits. Mike and myself have been in discussion with the company and looking at alternative ways that even if we're not back in production, you know, possibly can we bring junior workers in, say for uh, the GM training, UAT, what, uh, safety training, if we get them in there for a week, it would be fine get them reestablished, and then get the sub-credits reestablished once we have that program agreed to. Mike will go over some of the information in his report as well. They're looking at if you want to put a week's of vacation in, if you have a week vacation, that could kick you back in and replenish as well. So we're looking at many different options, 
But what we're looking at mostly is to maintain the people who are on layoff and keep them at 65% since the 50% is so, is so minimum of what you're going to receive. So I would just ask, be a little bit more patient with us. I know it's easy for me to say, but we've been out there a long time. We're looking to do the best we can to try and get you guys back onto this sub. One thing I'd like to say is the 2013 hire is, it's a shitty plan. Uh, there's no words around it. It, it. 13 weeks at 65 and 13 and 50, it's a shitty plan. This is gonna have to be changed at Detroit 3 bargaining. We will definitely raise it in a loud voice at the next round of bargaining, but it has to be corrected. The national spoke to national, as well spoke to other benefit reps, uh, not benefit reps, but presidents, at uh, 222 and 199. And Chrysler and Ford are going through it now because of the length of time of layoffs, but we're the first group that really hit this threshold and we started to pay 50, people at 50%. So hopefully in the future with uh, bargaining, uh, we'll, we'll get this corrected and get you as close as possible to the legacy workers coverage. My next issue is elections. Our triannual elections were supposed to take place May, June this year. We have two options that we're looking for in regards to having our elections. The first option is to have the elections done on June 7th and 8th, and that would be if, we're, if our members are back to work in the May timeframe. If we're not back to work in May, we have option two. Now option two come with a few things that we had to do to get approved. One is we have to get a 12 week extension because our terms are really out May or June and we have to apply with the national, we have to apply with the constitutional department on the reasons why we're asking for a 12 week extension. The executive, the executive and the election committee have made a determination that we were trying to have the election while people are in the plant working. With the uncertainty of what's going on, I, I most definitely hope we're back to work by May, June, but if we're not, we're gonna have to have an election August 30th and 31st. That's option two. Now with these two options, we have a lot of different dates that we have to fulfill. And we like, for an example, for the election to take place on the 7th and 8th, the notice election has to go out May 10th, 2021. Then the nomination period is open for a week. And then there's the election, then there's notice of runoff, and then there's runoff elections that would run out June 28th and 29th. So when you run an election, you have to almost schedule for over a month period to be, to give everything to fall in place with runoffs, notice elections and stuff like that. So the same is with the August one. The August one starts on July 30th and ends on September, sorry, July 30th, yes, and it, it runoffs are to end September 15th and 16th. So as you can see, it's well over a month period that it takes to run an election. The election committee has done a lot of work behind the scenes and basically they have set up that we're hoping simply voting who did our ratification Will, they, they have informed me just in the last couple of days, the election committee did, that we had the opportunity that we're gonna do likely all positions electronically. So if we have to go to option two, what we're discussing now with the executive and the election committee is we may just go to a full blown election, uh, election in August, and, and if we're not there, we're gonna have to have the election and it would be done electronically. Electronic, Campaigning will be on our local website and then whatever Facebook or whatever you wanna do, but we have to abide by the rules of COVID even if we are back. So handing stuff over the gate won't be acceptable. Um, posting stuff all in the rest areas won't be acceptable. So we would just ask that everyone abide by the rules of COVID when we do determine that when the election is. But in Mike's report, he'll go on somewhat of the status of what's going on with the, with the chip that's keeping us out right now. And if we're not May, back in May, we're likely gonna start going full bore for the election in August. And I hope everyone understands that it is, it is what it is, as Jeff Banks would say. But uh, we're gonna have to do it in August. We gotta get it out of the way. We have to do the triangle. Now there's a lot of positions. It's the same triangle, but like I said, we'll do electronic and we'll get through it together. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Mike Van Bokel, the plant chair. Just doing my part of the update for the April video. Uh, Joe touched on a lot of the subjects and I'm just gonna expand on some of the other ones and there's quite a few other topics. Again, nothing breaking news, but just stuff that we want our members to be aware of. Um, I'll start with full production. We have no real indication from the company 
when we're going back to work. I know there's lots of rumors. People were calling me this week saying Butcher got their notice to go back to work. Um, I do talk to our plant manager every couple of days. Right now, there is no date. It did look like at one time we were going to go back at the end of April, but that fell apart. Uh, right now, I don't even know if we're going to be back working in May right now. Uh, there's just nothing but rumors, but right now, definitely, there's no set date as of right now. Uh, as of next week, or for next week, we have 24 production members coming in and approximately 20 tradespeople. Uh, they want more service parts built out of the weld shop. We have been on layoff for quite some time. So we talked to the company. They phoned the 24 most senior people in our plant to do the work, uh, gave them the option, and whoever said no, they filled it in by going to the most senior uh, welding assembly or welding stamping and material handling people. So we will have 24 people in next week for one week only uh, by seniority plant wide and then by seniority by department to fill up all the remaining holes. Uh, for vacation, uh, this is more for the people who have less than 10 years and are sub eligible. Uh, we did talk to the company. Anybody out there who has uh, vacation floating out there that is in 40 hour blocks or five single days or 40 hours of bank time, if you want to use it next week, you can contact Sherry Adams. Um, Sherry Adams will put her address, her email address on the video once this is done, but it's sherry.adams at gm.com. Um, you can call her, or sorry, email her. If you want to use 40 hours next week, that will, they will consider that a new claim. So it'll re-trigger your full sub back in if you're eligible. Uh, and if you're looking for more money, if you want to use 40 hours of holidays, if you have 40 hours this year, uh, then you can do that and you'll get back to your full sub. Uh, the other thing we are looking at doing, as soon as the stay at home work order is over, we are in heavy talks with the company right now about bringing the people in with less than 10 years for one week only. Uh, there won't be any production, but you'll be doing various training. Again, this is not agreed to yet, but we are working on it. We strongly suggest everybody answer their phone and come to work for that week. That, they will treat that as a new claim after that as a return to work, and then you'll be able to uh, get your full sub going again. So that would be a very good thing. Uh, working summer shutdown. The company put an um, update out asking people if they want to work summer shutdown or not. You can work one week or both weeks. They are hoping to work both weeks, day shift. Uh, we are actually encouraging people to work. If you'd like to work, we've been down since February 7th. There's no guarantee we're going to be working at that point yet, but if we do get working, if the semiconductors come in, they do want to work both weeks. I just want to stress, especially to the people with less than 10 years, we got to get you guys working as many weeks as we possibly can. I'm going to get into that later, but you might want to strongly consider working those two weeks and taking vacation later when you're not laid off. Uh, for one thing, it'll get your claim going if it hasn't got your claim going by then, but it will get your claim going uh, for starters, and it's going to get some money into your pockets. Also, with COVID, there's not a whole lot going on right now. I'm not even sure if you're going to be able to travel or camp by then, so maybe you want to use your weeks later. We will talk to the company. We have talked to the company about rebooking and opening spaces up so people can take some other weeks uh, that you really wanted to in the first place. So hopefully it can be a win-win. TPTs. I do have quite a few parents calling me right now asking me if they're going to hire their son or daughter um, over the summer. I don't think we're going to surprise anybody. We're not working right now. We can't answer that question. If we get both shifts running soon or in May or June, uh, then yeah, we probably are going to have TPTs working. But right now, obviously, there's nobody in the plant working, so your kids aren't going to work right now. We just can't answer that question right now. Um, but hopefully everybody's back to work at some point and we can get the kids working, but right now we just can't answer that. Um, retirements. Again, we're going to go a whole nother month without working, and on the 1st of May we're going to have another class of retirees, probably another 30 or so going out the door. I just want to say congratulations uh, on behalf of the implant and everybody else to all of those people. It's very unfortunate that you're not going to get a, to walk around, shake everybody's hand, and say goodbye to some good friends and colleagues. Um, I know Joe's planning something at the Union Hall whenever COVID breaks that we can get everybody back together for a couple of drinks and some handshakes and some hugs. But uh, just to all the next uh, month of retirements, just a very, hopefully, a very long and healthy retirement and all the best in your future endeavors. Um, vacation selection. The vacation selection process has now been completed as of yesterday only. I'd like to thank everybody for your patience. Like to uh, apologize for waking a lot of people up at seven o'clock in the morning, but it really was the best time to get a hold of people. And I do want to thank all the reps that participated in this. 
We had to call almost 1,700 people, most of them two times each. It was a very, very long process. Some people asked why we were doing it. Uh, very few. Most people just wanted to get their vacation booked and get their lives set up. So that's what we did. The vacation's now done, and hopefully uh, most people got what they wanted, and uh, we move on. Uh, the EMD members. With our new collective agreement, we were able to successfully, uh, successfully gain five more PREF hires to the uh, GM warehouse in Woodstock. According to the contract, that starts after July 1st. I have been in contact with the head guy of uh, Woodstock. They are going to have openings very soon, right after July 1st. Um, the list to go to Woodstock was compiled three or four years ago. It appears all five of you people will be going probably in July and August. Um, so if you know, your, if you know your, if your name's near the top of the list, I suggest you talk to your family and decide if you'd like to go. You do have a couple months to decide before they come and tap you on the shoulder, but start thinking about it. Five people on that list are definitely going, it looks like this summer or before Labor Day, so um, it'll be good for those five people. Uh, inverse layoffs. The company is again offering inverse layoffs for the month of May, June, and July. We had about 100, and, oh, sorry, we had about 250 people apply. The company only needs about 160 to 170. We are still in those talks on how many people they need. The company, not the union, but the company is calling everybody on that list to notify you whether you made it or not. They are going mainly by seniority by department, so you should be getting a phone call either way uh, to let you know if you're on the inverse layoff or not. Some people who are getting it are going to start a bit later. We may need some of these people in for the month of June to help train, and then they'll go on for probably a two-month layoff. Um, again, it's a voluntary position, and again, if you don't have 10 years of seniority, I strongly suggest, unless you've got some very, very pressing needs, that you do not take it and that you keep working if you can. And I'll get to that uh, coming up. Um, just two more topics. The new vehicle. The new vehicle launch team is now in place. That work is proceeding. So for anyone in the plan, I know there's some people calling me saying that the, we're probably not going to open up again. We are definitely going to open. There is work going on in the plant with the new vehicle. Uh, the one, the roll through, the roll, but the roll test booth, they are going to start working on it. They want to dig the pits out while we're not there, which would be better for dust and everything. So the work is continuing. They are hoping to bring the launch team in in late May, early June. That is going to depend on COVID, on the equipment needs, et cetera. COVID is really, really bad in Michigan right now as well. So uh, they are working on a few things, but we are definitely moving forward on it. Um, as for the Equinox, the Mexican plant did start up again building Equinoxes. I have written letters with Joe Graves, uh, along with Joe, to GM and Unifor National, asking them to start our plant instead of the Mexican plants. Uh, we are very, very believe our, the Equinox is actually our truck. We've been building it for a decade. And if you look at all the stats, we build it better. Quality should mean something. However, um, Mexico is running right now. We don't know for how long, if it's only for two or three weeks. Uh, we think it's totally wrong. However, we make over $30 an hour, and Mexicans basically make peanuts. And everyone's very aware that GM likes to pay peanuts. So I think it's the only decision is based on money. OK, and just to wrap things up, I just want to point something out that's uh, pretty important. In 2020, we lost a lot of weeks, a lot of downtime to COVID. In 2021, this year, we have lost a lot of downtime due to the semiconductor issue, and I'm not sure when we're going to go back to work. In 2023, we are supposed to go down to four to six months to retool for the, to, for the new electric truck. Um, each of us needs to realize that the new vehicle may get pulled ahead to 2022. I can't say that because GM's not releasing that, and it's not for sure at this point but there's a very good chance that we are going to run for the next 8 to 12 months, um, and we could run pretty heavy. We may run every Saturday, and we could even look at running Sundays, as we are in talks right now about potentially running Sundays. For the people under 10 years of service, you need to work every single week that you possibly can, and I suggest working the weekends if you possibly can. I don't want to get any clearer than that right now. I can't get any clearer. You're going to get a lot of chances to make a lot of money over the next eight months to 12 months. You've got to take advantage of that. You've got to position a lot of the younger families, get a bit of a war chest built up. But more importantly, every week you work gets extended for your sub benefits uh, to kick back in. We're working on some agreements with the company to make it better, but we've got to get you guys back to work, and you've got to work as many weeks as you can to better position yourself and your family to take a big long run of full sub 
uh, and then the 50% sub after 13 weeks. You're going to get a big, big raise in September. That's going to make a huge effect on your 50% window. Instead of 20 bucks, it's going to be a couple hundred bucks. But also at full sub, you're going to get $1,000 a week. You've got to get yourself in that position. You've got to try and avoid layoffs, uh, if at all possible. So um, GM cannot announce because they don't know, but there's a lot of talks going on to move this truck up. There's a lot of orders for electric truck, which is good news, and hopefully it will be official at some time in the near future. But try and get yourself uh, in a position to get as many weeks as you can worked. That would include this summer shutdown. It's only for the best uh, for your money, for your family. We're taking a lot of downtime. We obviously haven't worked since February 7th. I don't know when we're going to come back to work again, but when we do, GM wants as many equinoxes as we can possibly build. And uh, for sure, they can force us to work six days a week. But if we can work that Sunday, at least one shift a week, I'd like to think we'll get enough volunteers at double time. Again, for almost eight and a half years, we work six days a week. Working a lot of overtime is a lot easier on your paycheck than uh, going through all these layoffs. But we are here to try and get you all the, uh, all the time we can. So just think of that going forward. But hopefully summer shutdown, you can get a couple weeks back in your bank. It keeps going on 13-week increments and 26 weeks. And it may not seem important right now, but by next spring or summer, if we go down for four or six months, these two weeks at summer shutdown plus every single week you can work might be the best thing that you can do. Uh, just the last thing I want to mention, Chris Wilson is retiring officially next Friday will be his last day. He's likely on layoff next week. Uh, we're, we, we, it all depends on what goes on with the people next week. Um, but uh, I just want to say to all the retirees out there, everything, uh, nothing but the best for all you guys and for Chris Wilson especially. I was a shift with him when I first started on the floor. I used to be on rear floor. We had a bunch of young guys and uh, we had a lot of fun. And Chris Wilson came to our aid quite a few times. I got to know him very well before I became a rep. And when I was a rep in welding for 11 years as a committee guy, uh, many, many times, pretty well every day, Chris Wilson and I would walk the floor and he became like a second dad to me, only because he's so much older. But, um, and now I've been chair for 15 years with Chris down there and I'll, I'd like to think we've almost been spoiled with uh, the safety reps we've had in that plant between, especially the last few years with Chris, uh, Jamie, and Karen Walden, we've had three fantastic ones, and that, that's nothing against the new ones, uh, Colin. Um, uh, and right now, John Arthur is going to take over for Chris Wilson. Um, and I think we, they've positioned the young guys into a great position that they have learned some of the best. We had Len Easton as an alternate. Uh, Scotty, we've had some great alternates out there who learned from these guys who really paved the way for our plant. Um, best thing I can ever say above our plant is I've never had to make the worst uh, visit of my life would be to go to someone's house and... Uh, tell them that someone died. It's been, our track record for safety has been fantastic, and a lot of it has to do with how hard the union's pushed. And just to Chris, uh, to Jamie, who's already gone, and to Karen Walden out there, I just want to say thanks for everything. Uh, but you guys are doing a fantastic job, and for Chris, just especially, nothing but the best uh, to you and your wife. Thanks for all the memories, a lot of laughs, some very big arguments, but uh, Chris taught me a lot about growing up over the last 25 years, and I do want to thank him. It's been uh, a great learning curve with him, and uh, he's brought a lot of experience, but just all the best, Chris. And for everyone else out there, just stay safe with COVID and everything else. Um, hopefully, we'll be back to work in May. I don't think we will be, but maybe we will be, but hopefully in June and hopefully before summer shutdown. But stay safe, everybody.